Most people, when they're looking to decide whether to buy or rent, they make the decision in this way. They compare the rent number, let's say 1,200, with the mortgage number, let's say 1,000, and then if one is smaller than the other, they say yes, it's cheaper to buy than to rent. Easy, right? Not so fast. If you're one of those people, you may be about to make the worst money decision of your life. They will put you into financial troubles for years and years to come. So how should you decide? As Ramit Sethi says, you should run the numbers. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my should you buy a house calculator so we can see together what the cost of buying a house really is. Before we get into the calculator, let me preface that buying a house is not purely a financial decision. There are so many lifestyle and psychological factors that go into it. For example, are you excited about buying a house? You want to have maybe a garden, something that is not so easy to find in rental properties. Or maybe you just simply like the idea of owning or having something of your own that you can modify however you please. If you can afford it, it doesn't matter if there is a bad financial decision. But I think it's important that you know how much the biggest purchase of your life really cost you. All right, well now uh, into the calculator. How do we actually assess how much a house really cost? I mean, first of all, we need to start from the price of a house. Uh, in this case, I've put in 500,000 pounds. There are two major types of costs that we need to assess. One is the upfront cost. So how much money do we have to pay upfront to buy this house and get it uh, up and running so that it's ready to be lived in. And then the second one is ongoing costs. So these are the ongoing costs that it will take to maintain and service uh, this specific house. Now, what you should actually account for, which I don't have in this calculator, is the closing costs because eventually you're going to sell this place. When you make a decision whether to rent and to buy, you should look at the complete cycle. So the cycle of buying it, living in it, and finally selling it out. So that's something that I don't have in this calculator. We want to keep things simple, but that's not something that you should absolutely take into account. And something that a lot of people don't realize is that closing cost or the cost of selling the property to someone else are also parts of that cost of investment uh, of buying a property. Let's start to plug in the numbers and we're going to go through a couple of scenarios. The first scenario is where I don't have any mortgage and also the house uh, is a freehold, so I will not be paying any service charge or any ground rent. A couple of costs that I need to uh, take into account. Let's zoom in a little bit here. The first cost is stamp duty. So this calculator says the 5% of the difference between the house price and the limit uh, that the government in 2023, we're now in 2023. So it's 425,001. We come up with 3,750. In this case, we don't have any valuation fee because there is no mortgage. Surveyor fee, 600 to check that the property is in good conditions, to check that it, it can effectively be sold. We also have legal fees to, to do contracts uh, and pay a solicitor for the sale of the house. Electronic transfer fee, mortgage fee, I've put zero, no mortgage here. And then we got renovation and furniture. This is an extremely low number. I want to show you what happens with a very low number if you are like super DIY friendly, you don't buy expensive furniture. You maybe already have furniture that you're bringing from another place. So I've only put five thousand but as you can imagine if you are actually having to uh, furnish and perhaps you know repaint or doing some things five thousand doesn't go very far let's put five thousand for the moment see what happens we come to a total fixed cost of ten thousand nine hundred so this is just the upfront cost something interesting that many of you may not think about it in this way is that when you buy a property and you make this investment it's kind of like buying a car right if you only keep it for one year and you've spent all of this money to buy it it's like as if you have spent spend 10,000 a year to maintain and, and, and get that, uh, that asset. But if you keep that for a very long time, it's the same with clothes, it's the same with laptops, with phones, you can effectively spread out those fixed costs, those upfront costs on a longer period of time. This is the same thing we're doing here. So what we are assuming is that the tenure of the property, so how long are we going to keep this property is five years. So what we can do is that we can amortize this fixed cost that we paid 10,900 at the beginning. And we can say, look, actually on a monthly basis, if we keep it for uh, five years, it's the equivalent of 180, uh, 82 pounds. 
Why are we doing this? Because we want to compare apples with apples. If we're comparing with a rent that is typically paid on a monthly basis, we need to have a comparable number on buying a house that we can then go and, uh, and compare. It gives you an, an understanding of once I've spent this money, if I keep the house for five years, how much am I actually spending per month if I distribute those costs over the five years that I'm keeping the property? I don't know if this is surprising to you or not, but on a monthly basis, actually just spreading the upfront cost is a already 180 pounds so imagine if you're keeping it for let's say only three years let's just do a quick check it's 300 right so no surprise the more you keep something uh, the lower monthly cost you will have but that's an important way because we're going to com be comparing this with the rent another cost of owning a property is ongoing costs well we need to take into account maintenance and repairs you know things break all the time we need to re revise the boiler maybe the roof gets broken maybe we need to insulate a specific wall because it's too humid maybe we need to call up Plumber. So again, this is a really conservative number. By the way, all of these uh, number estimates, I've taken them from a really nice art article, uh, which I'm going to link down in the comments below, that talks about the average cost of owning a house. I have not written the article, so I just trust the numbers. It should give you an idea of like what are the average costs uh, in the UK. A service charge zero, grant rent for leasehold zero because uh, we are lo looking for freehold. Mortgage interest also is going to be zero because uh, we don't have any mortgage for this. Our only ongoing costs are effectively maintenance and repairs. All right, this brings us to a total yearly cost of 5,700 and a monthly variable cost. Variable, why? Because this can change on a kind of monthly basis. So what I've done here to calculate the monthly, again, I have summed all of these costs and I've divided them by 12 months. We now calculated all the cost. Let's now also see how many people are buying this property because if you are, you know, two, three, four people, then the cost per person is going to go down. So I've got two property owners, which comes to a monthly total cost. These have just summed basically my monthly amortized fixed cost with my monthly variable cost. And I've come to a total of 661 pounds per person. It's 330 pounds with a total cost over tenure of 39,000. So this means that over the five years that I've kept the property, I've effectively spent 45,000 to buy and maintain this property. I mean, this looks pretty good to me. I live in London and uh, the average rent for two people is definitely not 661 pounds. So I would say overall, if I don't have a mortgage, I'm buying a freehold that has less costs and all of these other figures are accurate, perhaps this is actually a pretty good financial decision. Let's now take a look at what happens if I actually have a mortgage on this. Let's put some extra numbers. So if I have a mortgage, I have additional upfront costs because I need to get some paperwork done and there are certain fees associated with uh, getting a mortgage, the valuation fee, 1500 and another one is going to be the mortgage fees these are done and then we need to add mortgage interest let's assume i'm paying an interest only mortgage you can use very nice mortgage calculators to understand how much is going to be your mortgage on a monthly basis so touching on this in this video but uh, i can link below a couple of mortgage calculators that will allow you to understand how much you have to pay per month so let's say i've got 100 uh, 800 pounds this is um interest only i'm not interested in owning the property for a long time and effectively paying off the mortgage i'm just looking at it as an investment your situation may be completely different i'm just gonna multiply this for 12 months uh, to get a little bit of an estimate on a yearly basis and then as you can see the costs on a on a yearly basis have gone to 15,000 and the monthly variable cost is now 1,279 which now brings the total cost to 1,527 which per person is 768. You've seen that I've now added a mortgage and the situation is very different. Having a mortgage even if it's interest only so I'm not even putting any capital in it has suddenly made my per person from like 300 and something to like 700. If we're comparing it with, with the rent, you see that we're getting really close. The first takeaway that I want to bring home is that you think that you're just comparing the mortgage amount with the rent and the mortgage amount, you know, honestly would just be, what did we calculate? 800 per month, right? So it wouldn't be that, that much, but actually the total cost is not 800. The total cost is all the other costs amortized and translated into a monthly basis that need to be added to the mortgage. So we go from 800 to 1,527, which is basically double the amount of just the interest paid on a mortgage. For me, this was a big revelation when I, I did this exercise because everyone just compares the mortgage 
with the rent. And you can see that you can be very, very misled by this. And you can end up making a purchase that actually costs double what you thought you were gonna make. So imagine going for a pair of trousers, you think you're paying 50 pounds, and then you go to the till, they tell you, oh no, sorry, uh, actually costs you 100. You'd be very disappointed. And this is exactly the same thing. So if you fail to account for all of the costs of maintaining the property, of buying the property, and we haven't even calculated the closing costs, which are gonna be selling the property at the end, the number is much higher. So if you don't account for them, you will be making a really bad financial decision because you haven't accounted for basically half of the costs. Let's now go and add, if we were to buy a flat with leasehold and additional costs when it comes to service charge and ground rent. So let's say a uh, service charge is on a, a yearly basis, maybe it's like, 1,200, I mean, this really depends on the property. And then the ground rent is normally not that much, like let's say 50 pounds. We now get to a total of 16,000 monthly variable cost of 1,380. So this is really just to maintain the property, which is quite a lot. We are now getting to an additional 100 on the total cost per person. As you can see here, when we look at flat with a mortgage and with uh, all the costs associated to maintaining a flat, we can see that this number is now pretty high. As I said, this calculator, you can find it in the notes below. It's free to download. So please go ahead and grab a copy of Should You Buy A House uh, Calculator. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if yes, please subscribe to the channel. This is a new channel and I have so much more content that I want to share with you on money, on personal finance, on investments, and in general building wealth for the future. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm really grateful for you and, and your time. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.